Hey everybody, Dimitri here, and welcome to my healthy keto mukbang. I have prepared this wonderful feast for me here, my favorite chilled borscht soup. Very nice. And also today I have some experimental crepes. These are protein crepes, they are very light in calories. I'm going to see how they turned out, if they are actually tasty and good. And also I have some sauces and some low calorie jams I have prepared, which are going to be perfect with these crepes. All around this huge feast is only around seven, eight hundred calories. Anyways, I can't wait to dive right in, I'm literally starving. But first things first, as usual, my prayer and affirmations ritual. Thank you God for this wonderful feast that I should be born. Now it's good to get my benefit and grow. My body grows strong and my energy as my muscles grow and my energy grows strong and successful. Any obstacle in life in Jesus. My fighting in my life in Jesus. I'm victory in Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Let's get into this. This chilled borscht soup is simply amazing. Literally. It's a Russian Ukrainian soup. And you can eat it hot. You can eat it cold. And the cold version is so good. It's made from pickled beetroot juice. There's some vinegar in there. It's acidic, it's very tasty, and it's just awesome because you can eat it cold from the fridge. So you can always have a soup ready in the fridge, several minutes, and it's done. Some places literally sell, sell this soup, soup, serve it cold, it's a hot soup, cooked, boiled, and then served cold. I find it's way worse because it has some animal fat which has clogged into these small balls of fat, not really enjoyable. And overall this acidic taste of this soup is way better in my opinion. And it's made from pickled beetroot and some ham, uh, then boiled beetroot and meat. Also, this soup you can very easily make it very low calorie. Like for example here, it has egg whites instead of eggs. And instead of sour cream, fat sour cream, I can put here a very low fat yogurt. The taste will be almost the same, but the soup will have like two to three times less calories. Oh my god, it's so good. Could literally eat this every day for a year. It's my favorite soup. It's so good. Today, I want to talk about science. How science really works, what science really knows, what science can really establish, and how it applies to food. Because too often uh, the facts get twisted, the studies get cherry picked, and the information available to a general public in newspapers and articles, in videos, is so distant from what actually is going on in the science. And to a person who is not a scientist, not a PhD, who doesn't have any like real expertise there, it might really be convincing when they hear something like scientists have proven that something or scientists have discovered that something. Science proved that this is bad for you or this is good for you. Science proved that this causes cancer. And you go like, oh my God, it must be true. Science proved it.
but often it's way further from the truth than you think. It can be quite the opposite. So first of all, of course, I'm not even talking about articles which just blindly state science has proven, science has found. If there is no reference to a, a specific experiment, specific paper, specific proved experiment, proved study, then it's not worth anything. It's basically just word of the mouth, which can be completely false. But even if there's a link to a study, link to a paper, link to some experiment, which has been verified, there is this issue that people just completely twist what science actually is into something it is not. So let me explain by some examples. Hmm. After I enjoy a bit more of the soup. There was this experiment done recently, I mean, a big study in China, which studied how people die, causes of death, and which studied all the information about the demographics and stuff. So, this study shown people in which provinces, in which cities, what are the lead causes of death, what is the lifespan, what is their diet, what is their lifestyle, and so on and so forth. And this study produced a huge amount of data about all China, it's literally billions of people. All this data, how people died, how people lived, what they ate, and so on and so forth. And a scientist in USA wrote a book based on this study, where he said, well, this study literally proves that Eating meat causes cancer, and vegetarianism, vegan diet, is the best diet because it has so much health benefits. And he did this because he took the data from the study, which said that, yes, people who ate meat are people who get cancer and live less and die of cancer more. People who eat vegetables live longer, have less cancer. So it seems legit, right? It seems that the study proves that eating meat gets you cancer and eating vegetables gets you healthy. Problem is, people who ate meat lived in cities like Beijing and big industrial cities with terrible pollution in the air and all this stuff. Because they are more rich, there is more available food in there, there is higher variety of food and higher quality of food and abundance. Meat is expensive in China. But people who live in rural areas who are poor don't have access to meat, so they often eat vegetables more. So that's what this person completely ignored. And that's called cherry picking, and that's called misinterpreting the study facts, and that's called correlation, not equals causation. So we don't know if it's the meat which caused cancer, or if it's the living in Beijing or in different lifestyle, in different atmosphere that cause cancer, or both at the same time, or none of that. Science is accumulation of knowledge. Science says we have accumulated this knowledge about this subject, structured it, made sure it's correct, legit, made sure it's properly gathered, and now, here it is. That's what science does, nothing else. Science can draw conclusions, but these conclusions can always go wrong, and most often conclusions require more data to be proved. For example, in this case, after we see that, yes, there is correlation between people eating more meat and having cancer, between people living in Beijing and having cancer, we cannot say, okay, this causes cancer. We don't know. What we can say is that maybe it does. And to find out what actually it does, we'd have to have more knowledge, more data. For example, we can take many people, separate them in half. Half of them eat vegetables for the rest of their life. Half of them eat meat for the rest of their life. We track them and we see which of them, and they live in the same place, like in, in, in Beijing, and then they all die, we see which of them died of cancer, which of them died of what, and we can then extrapolate, okay, 
knowledge we have acquired proves that people who ate vegetables in Beijing, they lived longer than people who ate meat in Beijing. So it seems that regardless of where you live, eating vegetables promotes longer life. Or we take the people who eat the same thing like meat or vegetables only, and we put half of them in rural areas and half of them in industrial cities, don't let them move anywhere. And then when they die again, we analyze and we say, okay, people who live in rural areas have less cancer and these cities have more. That makes sense that living in cities causes more cancer. But you see, we cannot do that naturally. Such experiment will not be possible. Many sciences cannot create data, cannot do experiments like history, economics mostly. You could not try to cause some turmoil and havoc in a country to see how the economy will recover. That's not ethical. You cannot make experiments with history, you don't have a time machine. And so you have to rely on knowledge and evidence you have and draw conclusions from that. But there is no way to test it. There is no way to acquire more knowledge to create you can just dig for more knowledge. You can just observe for more knowledge. And that's why in food industry, for example, in area of food, in many areas, science actually can prove and establish very little. Science can only check the facts, see the facts. Science can study these facts. Science can do limited experimentation and acquire limited knowledge, but it's really way more limited than what people imagine it is and than what people state it is. So in this case, we will probably never know what causes cancer, meat or vegetables, living in big cities or small cities. It would take ages and impossible experiments to find out, really. But someone may take data from the scientific study like this and draw conclusions from it and say, this study proves that beef causes cancer. Eating beef and chicken and pork, eating meat causes cancer and eating vegan diet causes you to live longer. And to know a person, that sounds legit, but it's not. And that's what I want to talk about today. After I again, enjoy more of this soup. Because, for example, when you read, science proved that this, this is harmless, or this, this is safe. Understand, science can never prove something to be safe. It just cannot happen. Science can prove something to be most likely safe, but the more, how should I say, the more new, the more unique the compound is, the less likely, the less likely it is that you can rely on this, and the more likely it is, we can eventually find out we were wrong. So we can approve something of human consumption, deem it safe, and then in some period of time, like 50 years, we will discover it really is killing us. Then the science will say, okay, it's harmful. And people often say, oh, it's a conspiracy. Uh, like so and so company paid their way to get their product on the market and now we are suffering because of it. But it's not a conspiracy. It's just that science cannot prove something to be safe. That's not how science works. Think of it. How would you prove something to be safe to eat? There is no way. You can say, okay, I ate this and I'm still alive. Sure. What if you eat twice as much, three times as much, maybe you will die. You can say, okay, I ate this for 10 years of my life and I'm still fine. I don't see any difference. Well, what if your diet includes some sort of antidote, but other person doesn't have that and he will die if he eats it? You can say, okay, many people eat, ate this for 10 years 
they're fine. Okay, but what if in three generations this causes you to be sterile? So you eat this, you're fine. Your children eat this, they're fine. Their children, your grandchildren are fine. Then they can't have children anymore. Their sexual system basically collapsed and died. They are sterile because this thing you ate, it mutated them slowly, unnoticeably, and now we're extinct. That can happen, really. So how can you say something is safe? Well, what they do is they feed extensive amounts of it and observe results for several years and then they see, okay, no observable problems. They allow this substance to be used in humans. But this, again, can backfire. There are several cases where that happened. And right now, for example, sucralose, a very harmless sweetener, I use it myself, has been approved a long time ago. It's a very good sweetener, cheap. It's very potent, you only need a small amount. Doesn't have any aftertaste like stevia. But it seems that study now shows it might be problematic. It might cause gut bacteria to die. Your good gut bacteria tries to eat it and dies because it's poisonous to the gut bacteria. And your bad, bad bact gut bacteria does not die, but actually feeds off it. So by consuming it, you basically increase the amount of bad bacteria and decrease the amount of good bacteria and cause a problem in your gut. That might be a problem and that might be that it's actually harmful. But we had no way of knowing it because when we started to test it, we gave it in huge amounts to humans. It produced no bad results before it was safe. So when we say something is safe, all it means is we tried to kill people with it and failed, literally. We tried to kill, we didn't. We tried to induce harm, we could not. So we deem it as safe. Same thing about, I mean, different thing, but also similar problem can arise when you speak about science proved something causes cancer or science proved something is harmful for you. One thing is, what's the alternative? For example, I recently bought a Bluetooth gear and I use it to stream and I live stream so I can hear feedback from the PC. And my wife is like, is that not dangerous? I'm like, I never thought about it. So Google is dangerous. And what I find is that people literally say, oh, it's so dangerous because it's close to your mind. So you carry it here. It's, it's like literally cancer, don't do it. But then people don't understand that it's by definition way more safe than your mobile phone. Because if you have your mobile phone near your head, mobile phone produces way more interference, way more waves to connect to the distant tower. While this Bluetooth device only connects to the phone in your pocket. So even if this Bluetooth device is harmful, the mobile phone is hundreds, thousands times more harmful. So it's good to make this switch. It's beneficial, it is, no, no doubt, safer and better for your health to use a Bluetooth device in your ear than it is to use a mobile phone to talk. Because that literally reduces the amount of uh, all these rays and waves you subject to, your mind to, your body to. Now your phone is somewhere else and it's not as close to your body, hopefully. But even if it's close to your body, at least it's not very close to your brain, then your head, which is very important to keep in shape, to survive. And here is only a small device, which has only a small power, a small transmission signal to connect to the device, the phone. Other thing is, okay, it is harmful, but what actually has the science discovered? Oftentimes you can read some article with big headline that this and this causes cancer, or some other disease. And then you open the link to the study and they fed like 
100, 1,000 amount of doses to mice to do it. So <laughs> it's completely not the case. Yes, there is a fact that they use this substance to cause cancer, but first, you can't extrapolate from mice to human. We are different kind of animals. Yes, we have similarities, but they are different. And second, the amount. What was the amount? Will humans ever consume such an amount proportional to the weight? Too often, they just literally try to find if it is possible to inflict harm with some substance. They feed it to the mice until it's gigantic doses. They finally succeed. And the scientists themselves provide these results of the experiment. So we fed this much, this many times, in this many days, this happened to the mice. But humans, they didn't test on humans, but then people take this and twist it into saying this causes cancer. Yes, the scientists did conclude that that big of a dose administered that many times does cause cancer. But the scientists could have easily concluded that it means that you have to overdose a lot to get any negative results. So the substance is safe. So the scientific conclusion is substance is safe, but the conclusion which is made to make a good headline and news, make a good video viral out of it, is that substance causes cancer. Does it cause cancer? Yes. Will it if you consume it? Most likely not, because you won't consume it in this dose, or because you're a human, not a rat, not a mouse. Again, too often, they just link science experiments done on mice or apes, whatever, and say, oh, this is now proven to be bad. Yes, we have some similarities between humans, mice, apes, cats, dogs, but there are also many differences. For example, you chew chewing gum, most likely. It has xylitol, a sweetener. Well, your dog would die if, if, she, if he she ate it. To dogs, xylitol is a toxin. It's lethal, but for you it's fine. We are different. I wondered why all the cat feed I can find in the shop contains taurine. Taurine is usually with caffeine in found in energy drinks. It's like a mild stimulant. And I thought they added to cat feeds to basically make the cat more energetic, to make the cat desire, get hooked on the stuff you give it and make the owners deem that this type of cat feed is better because it makes their cat feel more energetic and life. But actually it turned out that cats, for them, taurine is essential. They cannot produce it in their bodies. For humans, it's not essential. You can produce it easily. So for us, it's this mild stimulant we don't need. But for cats, it's essential to survive. And cats usually get taurine from meat, from eating Basically, mice, they catch in the wild. And this taurine, it's actually quite like weak to heat. So it mostly gets destroyed when it's heated up. So all the meat that you cook is mostly devoid of it when it's cooked. So you have to eat raw meat to get it. And cats naturally eat raw mice and rats and they catch them. But if you feed your cat you know, like your whole food or cooked uh, food, then it will be low on taurine and your cat will suffer. So that's why they add taurine to these products so your cat stays healthy. For, for cat it's essential, for a human it's not. We are different. We should not, just like that, say, oh it has been proven in mice, that means it's bad. It may be bad to mice, not to humans. We are different. But again, the study found that this causes this in mice. People take off with it and go running around and shouting, yeah, this is cancer, this is bad. Man, this soup is something else. Really, it's so good. It's ridiculous. Got to get to my crepes and my mints here with some sauces to make it even tastier. Oh, 
here. Let's see if I can add some writing. Can I do it whole shape actually? Let's see. It should. It should. Here we can add some more. Like so. And some spicy sauce. Tasty, tasty Tabasco. It's good. Mm. I mean, the crackers are kind of bland to my taste. They definitely need some salt in there. The recipe had no salt, no sugar, nothing in it. They need some salt, maybe some spice. They don't even taste like eggs, even though they have eggs there. They are more of a flatbread than crepes, really. They are quite sturdy. So you can really wrap stuff in him. It will stick, it will stay there. Like you can see, I can easily hold this. They cook quite quickly. Some barbecue sauce here. This board. But mostly, the turkey means, because the crepes are just a very bland, supple taste. It's like they're almost not there. You just eat the mince. Definitely good, yeah. So what this does mean for you? It means that we, w we know way less than what people want to state. People say, when people say, when you read that so-and-so is dangerous, so-and-so is beneficial, so-and-so causes this, more often than not, it's way less pronounced and it's way less certain than how they make it sound. Because again, humans are not really interested in this information usually. I don't even know if this video will be interesting to many people. Because humans usually want detailed answers, problem solving, like exact answers, how, why, when. Nobody's interested in some data. Like, it's all about what's in this for me. What's the practical use of it? But thing is, most scientific discoveries don't have any practical use. It's just knowledge. Eventually, this knowledge piles up and you get some breakthrough, which can be tremendous. Oh my god, what the hell? Whatever. But immediately, not so much. It can take ages. And people want results now, so they exaggerate. That's how it happens. Hmm. Surprise me, good. Yes, the crepes are bland, but the means is awesome.
it really is more of a wrapper of a flatbread than it is a cracker. the next one. All right. I think we can take some more. Let's make a roll out of it, actually. Roll the end. And now we can have it like so. From this recipe, definitely to improve it. It's going to be a good fat bread recipe, I think. Not really a crepe, but it's a fat bread. It's going to be nice. Anyways, so what this means is really most thing you hear will be quite, quite, quite distant from the truth, and most very attractive, very shouting articles, headings, titles. Are most likely going to be misleading. Hmm, let's see. Also, what it most likely means is that. Just to understand, we don't have the information we want from science, so we will have to rely on unscientific data, on anecdotal evidence, and on just a lack of real evidence. Basically, draw your own conclusions and try it out, because there is no scientific way to see it, to understand it, to find out. We cannot accumulate enough knowledge to have scientific conclusion. For example, diets. A new diet in town like keto diet, Atkins diet, whatever. How can you know it's healthy? We cannot. It will take ages to test this diet. Maybe someone gets on this diet, starts losing weight, starts feeling good. What do you know? Maybe in five hour, five days, I mean, five years, he will be a dead man. Maybe in 10 years, he will completely ruin his health on this diet. We don't know. We have no way of knowing because so much time has to pass for us to have a reasonable understanding of what's going on. Even then, it's so hard to test it because it's so hard to get people to stay in the same conditions, but change one variable we want to test in terms of science. Like say we want to test if sugar causes something. Well, we have to take people and some of them eat one kind of diet, other people eat the same kind of diet, but we add some sugar there. And it's like, how is it possible? What if they want to change diets? So they have to commit to years and years of eating the same thing over and over. One people and other people, but just the change in sugar. It's ridiculously hard. Sure, we could take people on a month of an experiment, maybe on a year of an experiment, but that's so little time in terms of human lifespan, in terms of generations of humans. It's so little. We cannot really study the true effects of food because you would need several generations of studies of people participating in a study to have any reasonable conclusion. And by that time, our eating habits, our lifestyle will completely change. It will no longer be relevant. Like, 
Will keto and Atkins and Dukan diet be relevant in 100 years? Most, most probably not, at least some of them. Who knows how the food industry will evolve? Our eating habits, what will we even eat? Maybe we will eat like in the Matrix, this functional stuff, devoid of taste and shit, just carefully combined and processed nutrients, which give you pure health and benefits. Like <clears throat> you get all you need quickly and you're just free to do whatever you want during the day. Maybe we'll eat completely differently, we don't know. Our way of living can change much, and then again the result will no longer be applicable. If we live in a different world, that can have huge influence on how we live, how we die, how we change, and all this diet data we acquire will be completely irrelevant by then. So science cannot answer the question, is keto healthy? Is Atkins healthy? It can say that based on what we know about metabolism and digestion, this, this would happen when you eat like this, and probably this would lead to this, and so on and so forth. So most likely you will live but have health problems like this and this, or most likely you will have these problems, or most likely you will have no problems. That science can tell, but it's not more than that, that's much more. And another thing which can be contributed from this is that while I personally don't hate on chemical and human created stuff in food, more, many people do. Many people say like, eat natural, don't touch this chemical stuff. Everything is chemical. But the thing is here, it might actually be reasonable to say that whatever humans have eaten for ages, for generations, is most likely safe. Whatever new thing we have discovered as humans, we have made up, like sucralose, aspartam, that can can be bad. Can be bad, can be fine, we don't know. But for example, if we find a new use for stevia or monk fruit to be used as a sweetener, we can be sure it's most likely safe, because humans have consumed monk fruit for generations and stevia, and so we know that subproduct of it should also be safe for humans. But if we have some new compound, which seems to be safe, we don't really know what will happen when it's consumed by generations of humans, by hundreds of years, we, we cannot be wrong for sure. So this is one reason why you can stick to organic and natural ingredients and just ignore and fear and just try not to eat anything, which is this new human-made stuff. One reason is that it has been tested by ages of human consumption and this new stuff has not and has no way of being tested. But then you limit yourself so much because all this new stuff we will develop, all these awesome advancements, you will have to abstain from them. Only those which use already consumed foods in new ways that you can have, but others you will have to abstain and the further you go, the more it will be that you will have to abstain from. And there is no way in your lifetime anything becomes even close to being confirmed by consumption of humans. Because you would have again to live like thousands of years to see that to happen. To see, okay, many generations lived and didn't have any issues, now it's safe.
very nice. Again, it's more the mints than these pancakes, crackers. These are just, basically it's a good fat bread. That's it. That's what it's good for. Add salt, pepper, some inulin, maybe, maybe some spices. It's going to be good fat bread, but nothing more. It's not a good crepe. It's an okay crepe. It's a satisfactory crepe, but that's it. It's not A plus. It's not S. Hmm. Another thing to conclude is that don't go looking for scientific proof and scientific, how do you say, certainty. There's very little science is certain about in nutrition, in consumption, in diets, and all this stuff. There's very little we can be certain about. And most what you can be certain about is of no use to you. Like, science can be certain that if you eat cyanide, you will die. Good to know. Science can be certain that if you drink 10 liters of water, you die. If you eat, what is it, 10 tablespoons of salt, you die. Yeah, that thing you can know from science, but that's no use to you because you wouldn't need to ever like judge, okay, am I close to dying from the amount of water I consumed? You probably won't naturally consume any more than six liters of water in a day. So consuming 10 is like insanity, which is most likely never gonna happen naturally. Unless you want to like torture someone to the limit of their capacity, I don't know, whatever. Hmm. But then Again, don't demand evidence because there is none. Don't look for a scientific answer. Just know it cannot be had. There will never be concrete scientific proof something is safe. It's just a fact. It's no way to do it. There will never be, um, how should I say, concrete scientific proof that some diet is better or is safe. It's not possible. I'm going at half, I think. You can find scientific data about, for example, nutrition, about digestion, like how do humans digest something, how processing human bodies work, what happens when humans do this or that. And this can lead you into drawing conclusions, which diet is better, which diet is more sound, which diet should produce which results. But that's the extent. And it's very, very, very un... How do you say? Very, very rough information, very rough knowledge, which is nowhere near as concrete and specific as people would like you to have. People would like just to have an answer, like, which is better, this or that? What will happen if I do this? Naturally, like this, what's new for me? concept, but science often doesn't know. We don't know which diet is better. To know it, we will have to study it for 200 years.
And that means you should not look for this proof because all you will find is fact tossing, cherry picking, misinterpretation of data, logical fallacies and stuff like that. Instead, you have to look for knowledge you can have and then draw your own conclusions, which will not be as specific as you would like, but at least you will understand how it can, cannot work, and what to do about it. Okay, that's done, and that's done. That's why, in my opinion, it's better to study facts and real science, real experiments, real studies and what they show. You don't have to like read these complex papers. You can study you know, videos which explain it, synopsis, read synopsis, to make it basically easier on yourself. I'm going to try this with just sweetener. Should be quite delicious on its own. Let's see. Just wrap it like this. In a tube. Just a cracker and some sweetener. Mm. Delicious and so light. Like this thing. About 50 calories. So, again, quite a lot. Maybe 60. Let's have some jam here. This jam is the one I made. It's very low calorie. It's almost zero. In the 100 grams of this jam, you will get what? around 20 calories. So once again, this is perfect for dieting, down for restricting calories. You can just have so much of this and never get any issues. Just enjoy and enjoy. Mm. I mean, of course, we wouldn't mistake this for your crevices, but for how low in calories it is and how tasty it is, it's definitely a win in my book. Like, this is really very sweet, very tasty, and it's you can enjoy so much of it. It's very good for what it is, but of course, you understand it's a bit fake when you consume it. Okay, this doesn't want to wrap up. I put too much filling in there. Mm. Mm. Yep.
So it's good to actually understand what's going on inside your body, what's going on, how stuff is digested, what inf- inflicts what, what causes what, like how these diseases commonly work, why do they happen. But then when you hear something or read something else, you can at least base your understanding on what you already know. You can at least like feel the level of bu- level of bullshit you're reading because you understand, okay, this sounds like nonsense and this sounds reasonable because of what I know for sure. And if something sounds too good to be true or too outrageous, too sensational, see if it has a source. If it has a source, check it and see what actually happened in the research, in the experiment, in the paper. Like, what did they really study? What did they really find? Is it actually reasonable to conclude what the newspaper, what the video concludes from the study based on what the study really was. Again, if they overfed mice with gigantic amounts of some compound and finally the mice cave in and die of cancer, is it reasonable to say this causes cancer? Of course not. Yes, it does cause cancer, but in humans, when you consume reasonable amounts, never. not an issue. Again, when you hear something is dangerous, well, why is it allowed for human consumption then? Whatever is really dangerous, of course, would not be allowed for consumption. What, like, when you hear some such outrageous claim, that's, for example, Pepsi Cola is bad for your health. Really? Like, if it would be obviously bad, they would have banned it ages ago. It's obvious not that bad for that to happen. So what is the result is that what really is, is that it's probably not as dangerous as they tout, but probably there are more healthier ways to eat than drink Coca-Cola. That is true. Again, what is the fact and how it is pre- presented to you is completely different things. Again, depends on what's the alternative and what's the pre-existing condition. For example, is salt bad? Well, many articles say you have to reduce salt intake. And I believe if we would have given salt just to humans, for example, just take um, a study, pick several Americans. For some of them, we make them eat an extra tablespoon of salt a day. Probably the study would show that these Americans get health issues. So can we conclude that salt is bad for humans? Of course not. Salt is essential. You would die without salt. You need salt. It's essential for you. You must intake salt. It's all about how much you already take for foods. So if you already eat typical American European diet, fast food and stuff, then you have too much salt already. That's why salt is bad for you. But if you don't Salt is essential. It all depends on how much you consume and 
when you study things like this, like this salt bad, the study could show yes, giving more salt to people causes problems. But what this study really means is not that salt is bad, it means that we have enough salt already in our diets, no need for more. And when you study nutrition, study how it works, that's when you will have easier time discerning all these things. So you'll read such outrageous claim and say, yeah, I get why, why they say that, but they're wrong. I know why. I understand. Like why many people, even in Russia, many professionals would say ketogenic diet is so bad and unhealthy. Again, because they trust people who just misinterpret science. And they just often go by some, you know, populist articles and just by some common sense which doesn't work. Like they know excess fat intake, especially the kind of fat people eat. Don't eat any very healthy fats. We eat these processed fats, saturated fats mostly. Too much omega-6. And I think, okay, if person eats even more of this, it's going to be bad for him. But that's not what keto diet is. But they heard it's about eating more fat. So they think, okay, if you eat more of these fats, you will be unhealthy. And that's like, again, how you should not do science. You should actually study not what... You should actually pay attention, basically. Not just what you hear and understand, but deeply read and understand what's being written, what's the core, and just make sure you understand it properly. Not like your first glance, which is possibly completely wrong. Quite possibly. I can understand whatever you read. It's most likely being exaggerated and over empathized just to make it readable, just to make it sensational. So you click on it. Understand again that science is just accumulation of knowledge. We have observed, we have seen, that's what the science is. Conclusion is already human invention. It's not science. Science just knows something works like this. It was observed to be like this. You can deduce, yes, most likely it works like this because, and most likely it will work like this then. But again, in some cases we can test it. Like when we see apples falling and we say there must be some law of gravity, we can test it. We can throw apples and see if they fall as well. But with food, we cannot. We see some people have problems after certain diets, but we cannot force many people, significant amount of people, on a probably harmful diet, which they will probably die from, just to see if it is actually harmful. That would be unethical. Just imagine you're asked, like, we want to try out this product, which is probably going to kill you. You want to see if it kills you or not. Really? That's the limit of science. We cannot do that. And that's why in foods, in food science and nutrition, so much we cannot test. 
we can't be certain of. So much. So again, if you want to be healthy, you want to maximize your chances of not consuming something harmful to you, then I guess your only bet is really to stick to very natural, very like time-tested things which humans ate for a long, long time. And that's why these paleo diets and other kinds of diets like paleo, they have their merit. They say, just eat whatever humans always ate and you'll be fine. And they are true, correct. If you do, you will be. Will you enjoy it is the question. <laughs> Like, most of this won't be possible without modern inventions. I can just literally enjoy food for hours now because of what our industry has developed. It's awesome. It's good. But if you stick to natural things, that's not possible. I mean, kind of, yeah. But then it's already a stretch. Like, is almond flour paleo? Paleo is what our ancestors had access to. Almonds? Yes, they did. Almond flour? No. They would not grind nuts into flowers. So, is it paleo? Yes and no. Same thing, more fruit sweeteners. Our ancestors never bothered with sweeteners. There was no such problem as to reduce calories from sweet foods. Sweet foods were highly desirable, highly sought after, and very, very much appreciated. Sweet foods Mostly fruit, the seasonal, rare, and rich in many nutrients. So we appreciated the option to eat them and ate them in as much as we could amounts. No restriction. It was no big deal to binge on some fruit and berries. You will never have had, had enough. And again, it was seasonal, so whatever chance you got, you have better have used it, because then it's gone for a year. Now, different situation. Sweets are so cheap. Literally, even a poor person can buy himself a hoard of sweets And just eat, eat, eat until his stomach bursts. Really? They're so cheap. So again, even if you go this paleo quote route, where you only eat whatever our ancestors had access to, if you allow yourself things like this, which our ancestors ate, but in different roles, in different amounts, in different conditions, you can already change something which you don't account for. For example, science shows that for some people, sweeteners actually cause insulin spike. They cause a reaction as sugar. 
their bodies just anticipate sugar coming in and trigger insulin response just in case. They can create all sorts of problems in humans. If we eat these sweeteners, these sweet foods which don't have sugars in them, this could completely ruin our system. We don't know. But we think, okay, it's safe because we have eaten it before, like stevia, more food. Not in this role. It may be stevia and monk fruit itself is safe, but consuming this kind of shape is harmful. Not because stevia and monk fruit itself is harmful, but because what it does to our brains, to our bodies, how it confuses them and tricks them, and basically cheats them and makes them completely mis malfunction. That might happen. Even then, yes, we would eat like we ate before, but we wouldn't live like we ate before. To eat like we did before, you would consume too much calories because nowadays food are, foods are more dense in calories. We just have cultivated better foods, which are more rich in macronutrients. And you move less. You have to endure less hardships, less stress, less weather effects on you. Like you have these comfortable houses. Less of all this means less calories burned, means you need less food. So even if you rely on that, you still don't live like people did before. So again, even that might not help. So then you don't really have any specific way to shield yourself from all these issues. So in my opinion, you just have to live with it. You just have to give up this human idea that we can know all and just live in this uncertainty and just study what we can, embrace what knowledge we can, think for ourselves and just live on this life of uncertainty. Yes, it's frightening, but it's not what we have. And relying on orchestrated, cherry-picked and mis misformed conclusions is not better than that. It's a lie. A sweet lie, but it's a lie. In the end, I think bitter truth prevails. Yeah, this. Let me see. Yeah, can you see it? It's awesome. It's like sugar and this pastry. It's nice for desserts and it's nice for like a flatbread to wrap some savory fillings with sauces in them. It's dry, so it needs sauce. It needs sauce very much. Or this jam also works because this jam is quite moist. Yeah, it works. You won't mistake this for a crepe. 
but it's good. Here let me finally consume this I had for a long time in my fridge. These nice dual carrier gems. Gonna make some more of them. So for this roll, this crepe is good, but as a crepe, it's obviously not. And on its own, it's just quite bland and quite tasteless. Maybe a cracker, cracker cake out of this would be good, like a tower. Good idea. It's dry, and the result will be this tower full of sauce, which will make it moist and probably very delicious. When I make that, definitely. Anyways, that's my advice today for you. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hope it was useful. Make sure to subscribe and click notifications right there so you'll be notified when I release another Mookpad video. And then check out this playlist right here with more Mookpad videos you will definitely enjoy. Love you all and see you all again real real soon.